the story begins in a place called the Earth Dragon Kingdom, where the sun in the sky is emitting a light that is destroying Linhe City. The world, overrun by countless monsters from other worlds, faces enormous disasters, leaving humanity with no hope. However, the heavens did not abandon humans. Just when everything was about to be destroyed, markings appeared on the backs of all humans' hands, awakening various special classes through those mysterious marks. Since then, mankind has entered an era of class shifters. Among the many awakened, there are only three mythical classes. Lighthouse Kingdom Ghost Swordsman named Alpha. Timur Kingdom Hill Dragon named Restivy. Icebound Kingdom Frost King named Quan Zixian. Due to the immense strength of these mythical classes, the Lighthouse Kingdom, Ephemeral Kingdom, and Icebound Kingdom have always been far ahead of other kingdoms in terms of strategies against other worlds. A hundred years ago, a talented class shifter emerged in the Dragon Kingdom, the strongest in the Dragon Kingdom. Xueluo set the highest record in China in just 10 years, becoming the first adept of the 70th world. When the strongest level of the nine beasts invaded, Xueluo, as the eighth class shifter, defended the rift alone, saving the Dragon Kingdom but sacrificing himself. In the present, news reporters are announcing that today is the 100th anniversary of the heroic death of Exuluo. The memorial service held in the capital, Dragon City, the day before yesterday was attended by the top class shifters in the Dragon Kingdom. The reporter also states that this year, a total of 12.52 million people participated in the awakening of the kingdom, an increase of 11.3 compared to last year, setting the highest record in 110 years. Among these core class shifters, account for 10 far exceeding the record from the year X Luo was born. The reporter adds that perhaps the birth of the next Xiu Luo can be anticipated. Meanwhile, thunder strikes in the sky. The protagonist, who was sleeping, hears a voice saying that the doors to an alternate world are about to open and that class shifter should prepare. He opens his eyes, hears the voice again, and suddenly feels shocked and pale. He stands up in shock, looks around, and says, Did not die already. Where am I? He touches his head as it starts to hurt. Suddenly, a flood of memories rushes into his mind. He sees a child, a boy with a pathetic look. A girl telling him he has awakened as the most useless class in the world, not worth her time, and a nurse informing him that his little brother's Zhang Yu's medical bills have been delayed for two months, urging him to take his brother home if he cannot pay. He also sees a boy saying that a poor person awakening as a beast tamer will die in an alternate world sooner or later and expresses regret, saying, I'm sorry, I'm a useless older brother, I can't save you, and I can't save myself. Seeing all this, the protagonist gets confused and asks, whose memories are these? After taking some time to settle down and assess his circumstances, he realized something extraordinary. He had been reincarnated with the exact same name as his previous self, a hundred years into the future. As he surveyed his new situation, he noted that the body he now inhabited belonged to a beast tamer, a class widely regarded as weak and ineffective. He understood why beast tamers were often seen as useless. They relied heavily on their pets for combat, needing to balance improving their own skills with enhancing their pets' attributes. It was calculated that becoming a powerful beast tamer required immense wealth, often comparable to the resources needed to rule a kingdom, making it a difficult path for ordinary people. Reflecting on the past life of his new body, he discovered that Zhang Yu, the former owner, was a failed young man who had taken his own life. Feeling a sense of responsibility, he decided to honor Zhang Yu's life by taking up his burdens and aiming to conquer the challenging alternate world they now lived in. He looked at a photo of Zhang Yu's younger brother, then put on a shirt and faced a mirror, declaring his intent to repay the life he had been given. At that moment, a portal materialized accompanied by a system message indicating the opening of a gateway to alternate world. He commanded the portal to open and step through. As he did, another system message appeared acknowledging that he had been offline for an astonishing 36,552 days. The system provided him with detailed stats and rewards, including a vast accumulation of alternate energy and a mythical treasure called the Supreme Oracle. The Supreme Oracle was activated, granting him a permanent boost in alternate energy collection, increasing his gains by 10,000 times both online and offline. This effect took immediate hold, significantly multiplying his idle income, and he received an immense amount of alternate energy as a result. Seeing the staggering amount of alternate energy he had accumulated, 
He felt a mix of shock and joy. He couldn't believe the incredible reward he had received for overcoming the most advanced beast wave in the alternate world. Just then, another system message appeared, offering him a chance to reset his class and choose from one of the seven mythical core classes. The system displayed a list of available classes alongside his current one, Knight Undead Doom Rider. The options included Warrior, Dark Swordsman, Assassin, Shadow Reaper, Priest, Holy Priest, Mage, Hellfire Mastery, Archer Ghost, Beast Tamer, Necromancer. Reflecting on his past, he recalled how a hundred years ago he had awakened as a top-tier warrior, but the strongest core class in that alternate world had been the Beast Tamer. Despite its strength, the class required an enormous amount of alternate energy for both personal and pet development, making it difficult to advance. Now, with his vast reserves of idle rewards, he made his decision. His first choice was, of course, the Necromancer. As he selected the class, a message congratulated him on becoming the fourth mythical core class in the alternate works, Necromancer an advanced beast tamer class. Instantly, he received a 100-star initial growth. Feeling the surge of power, he exclaimed happily, appreciating the remarkable strength that came with it being a mythical class. He then glanced at his status window. The description for his new class, Necromancer, highlighted its mythical core nature. The Necromancer, known as the Messenger of Resurrection from Hell, specialized in harnessing the power of the dead Finding excitement only in his growth stats were impressive. Magic attack growth, 25 stars. Mana growth, 18 stars. Health growth, 20 stars. Physical defense growth, 18 stars. Magic defense growth, 19 stars. Additionally, he had acquired several skills. The first was Soul Harvest, which gave a one chance to harvest the soul of a monster he killed in the alternate world, turning into a pet. These pets could not be traded and were exclusively for his use or as materials for upgrading other pets. Another skill in Dead Evolution allowed all of his pets to evolve by devouring others of the same level with the potential to reach mythical status. These pets also possessed unlimited loyalty. Lastly, the Death Reduction skill have the experience required to upgrade all of his pets, making their growth much more efficient. He knew that ordinary beast tamers typically improved their pets' intelligence through mission rewards with limited potential for quality enhancement. To his delight, he discovered that a necromancer could not only evolve pets, but also harvest monsters as their own pets. The immense power of this mythical class made him very happy. Reflecting on his past life, he remembered how he had cleared 70 worlds in just 10 years with his top-tier class, becoming the number one in the Dragon Kingdom. Now, starting his present life with a mythical class, he was determined to clear each level perfectly until the final world. He vowed to not only become the strongest in the Dragon Kingdom, but also to achieve the number one position in the entire world. After all his preparations, he entered the alternate world and received a system message. Welcome to the first alternate world, Nightmare Source. Based on your login location, the system will match you with a safe area called Doomsday Town. The system gently reminded him that fighting was prohibited in safe areas and asked if he wanted to continue using the IDZ Aluo He declined and chose a new Eddy Zero, explaining that he aimed to surpass his former self, Exio Luo, believing that the ultimate achievement was represented by the concept of Zero. Upon reaching Doomsday Town in the Nightmare Source, he gathered with other people, many of whom appeared to be newcomers. One girl exclaimed, is this an alternate world? It it feels just like the real world. So mystical. Another person asked, weren't there supposed to be monsters everywhere in the alternate universe? Where are the monsters? Someone replied, this is a safe zone. The monsters are outside. A message appeared before everyone, announcing the first world quest, which could be viewed on the mission interface. Following this announcement, some people began searching for teammates, while others started preparing in advance. The mission for the Nightmare Source, the first world, was to survive and break the Doomsday Cycle. They had to clear numerous disasters and defeat the darkness that revived the monsters sleeping beneath the earth when darkness covered the land. There were also two specific world quests. They until a total of 1,000 monsters in the first world. Two, collect 10 silver coins by killing monsters or completing quests in the first world. Remaining, completing these quests would unlock the first world boss dungeon channel. Defeating the boss would grant access to the second world. After reviewing the quest details, he closed the system window and remarked calmly that the layout of this alternate world seemed unchanged from his previous experience. 
He decided to purchase some equipment before tackling the quest. Into an equipment center, he was greeted by the shop owner, Charles, who asked what he needed. He glanced around the store, noting that the systems equipment shop was just as he remembered, offering only basic, unrefined products. The best item available was a one-star piece of equipment. Seen him browsing, the store owner approached and said, if you're not satisfied with these, I also have higher quality equipment available, though it will cost more copper coins. C. Luo took out 100 copper coins and asked the boss for a one-star staff. After purchasing the staff, he appeared satisfied, but the onlookers were puzzled by his choice. One of them asked, did you spend all your 100 copper coins from the newbie gift package on that staff? Another person chimed in, agreeing, that's right. A one-star staff doesn't offer much attack power. It's more cost-effective to buy a complete set of unrefined products instead. Shiruo turned and walked away, thanking them for their advice. After he left, a girl in the crowd asked, wouldn't a weapon with a higher star rating have better attributes and increase attack power? The man explained, refining equipment requires alternate energy, which is only obtained in small amounts by killing monsters during quests. For instance, if you kill a pig-type monster, you'll get just one unit of alternate energy. It's a precious resource, not de-wasted. Refining a one-star staff with it would be foolish. The onlookers continued to discuss Ixiel Luo, criticizing him for spending all his money without investing in defense. One remark, this kid is bound to face disaster later. Another added with concern, I don't know where this country boy came from, but he clearly has no understanding of how things work. Progress is tough without money, both here and outside. After walking a bit further, Gio Luo paused and reflected for the average new class shifter. Spending all their money on a one-star piece of equipment isn't cost-effective. He then examined his staff, noting that the alternate energy an ordinary class shifter could obtain from slaying monsters was extremely limited, making it impractical for them to refine one-star equipment. The fire staff, usable by mages and beast tamers, was a refinable item it had the following stats, levels, zero, magic attack power, five, a mediocre magic staff that could in increase damage. After reading the staff's information, he smiled and said, it's a shame I'm not lacking alternate energy. He then began refining his staff. Sai's system message appeared stating that the refinement would consume one point of alternate energy and had a 10% chance of upgrading to a green attribute. The higher the attributes, the greater the refining consumption and the lower the success rate. The system asked if he wanted to proceed, and Exulo responded affirmatively. On his first try, he succeeded. The system asked if he wanted to refine it again, and he agreed. After multiple attempts, with some failures and successes, he received a message. This equipment has been increased to the highest level. The number of one-click refinements is 132 times, with a total consumption of 985 alternate world energy. Congratulations on obtaining the golden attribute. The staff's name changed to Fire Herald Staff. Observing the staff refine 132 times, he proudly remarked, this showcases the potential of hundreds of billions of alternate energy. He then examined his staff's details. Fire Herald Staff, level zero. Magic attack power, 26. Additional attribute. Intelligence. Skill burning. Each attack puts the enemy in a burning state for three seconds, causing them to lose 20 health points per second. It describes the staff as being born from flames, destined to turn enemies to ashes. With this final preparation, he was ready for battle.